Now it's hard to believe that we're in the fifth month of the year already. The year's just flown by, but that means we're well into barbecue season. So the plan for today's video is to turn my rickety old barbecue, which has seen better days, into a barbecue cart. We're going to do this using decking for the top, and for the legs and the supports we're going to use some reclaimed 4x2s. And this build is also going to be an excellent opportunity to put the Evolution R255 Mitosol to the test, checking out its capabilities. So I only cut two pieces of the deck in to the required 1200mm length. I used scraps and offcuts for the middle piece because as you'll see in a minute I'll be cutting the middle bit out so it doesn't matter if they don't meet in the middle. So with all the top pieces laid out on the floor I could then place the barbecue lid on top to ensure I had enough length on the offcuts. So with the scrap 4x2s I could get on to cutting out the legs. The two back legs will be slightly longer than the two front legs because the two front legs will have wheels placed in them which will slightly jack up the front of this barbecue cart. I also cut out four bracing pieces that the top slats will screw to. I laid them out on my workbench so I had an even surface to work from and then I could move on to screwing in the top slat to the back and front braces. This piece of decking was bowed from corner to corner but by screwing it down I managed to sort that out. I'm using a special drill bit here, it's a countersink drill bit specially designed for using on decking. And it's the first time I've ever used it and to be honest it worked really well actually. So I just went ahead drilling out and countersinking each of the holes two holes in each piece and then came back with these decking screws and just secured everything in place. And obviously I flipped the piece around and did exactly the same thing on the other side. Then I could place my barbecue lid on and using my tape measure I could ensure that it was in the centre. Here I had to make a few little adjustments and then I could draw around it. Once I had a rough idea where the kettle part of the barbecue was going to fit I could then add the second braces slightly away from the line that I would already drawn checking that they were both evenly spaced and then again I went back over it with my decking countersink bit and fired in some more decking screws. I added a front and back piece of decking to the top just to hide the bracing bits and then I could use this to secure the legs to. So after checking that the legs were square I could then clamp them into position and secure them in place with the screws. I had to use a non-decking screw for one piece as it didn't have any decking screws long enough. I wanted to add some extra strength to the front legs as I've already mentioned they're going to have some wheels in them so I turned my mitre saw to 45 degrees and I cut out these two angled bits to secure into the front legs. And I must say, as you can see here, although I'm using the multi-blade in this saw, it left a real neat and clean cut. Before I started this project, I made sure that the fence on the mitre saw was square, so I know now that these brace pieces come to a perfect 90 degree angle. And it's really strengthened up the legs, as you can see here. So you saw me earlier draw an outside ring around here. I've eyeballed it and, and come in an inch and draw a double ring, which is what I'm going to cut out now with the jigsaw. However, I don't know if the camera's picking up, but it's absolutely it down with rain at the minute, so I'm going to run it. 
So now that the sun's out and the rain's gone away for another hour or so, I could get out the jigsaw and start cutting out the secondary circle that I had already drawn off camera. So now we're left with this lovely circle I can get on and cut the barbecue up. Now you may think this next part is overkill, but it's not. I can't undo the legs from the inside because they're bolted in and the bolts have gone rusty and they're baked in. Also, if I could take the legs out, there'd be holes in the bottom. So the only way to keep the holes filled up is to cut the legs off. Whilst cutting these legs off, I worked out I really enjoyed cutting up things with the angle grinder. So now I can give the kettle drum its first dry fit to make sure that it fits okay. And it fitted perfect. And the bubble you can see here on the table is actually because my patio is dreadfully uneven. Now on this piece of 4x2 I want to make a trench cut so that I can secure it to the back of the legs that I've put in place already. To do this I marked up half the thickness of the wood, then came back with my set square and drew a nice straight line. This evolution saw has the ability to adjust the depth of the cut. So by turning a nut and adjusting the screw, you can stop the blade from going down too far. So I just adjusted the saw until the blade came to the top of the line. And then using a scrap piece of wood against the fence, I can make the trench cuts. I had to put the scrap piece of wood up against the fence because by adjusting a depth stop, it shortens the length at which a blade makes a full depth cut. So here I'm just cutting the wood and sliding it along a little bit, making another cut until I got to the end. Then this piece was actually rather therapeutic. I could just use a chisel to break off these pieces of wood. Then using the belt sander I could just clean this trench cut up. Then off camera I checked that these shelf supports were level and at the same height as each other. Then I could clamp them to the legs and just screw them into place. This gave the legs extra rigidity, so now I could tip the table up and get on with fitting the wheels. So as I mentioned, I'm fitting the wheels to the front legs with the bracing supports on. After marking up where I wanted to drill, I clamped an off cut of wood to the outside of the legs so that when I drill through, I don't get any tear out. Then using a 7mm drill bit, I just drilled all the way through. Because I'm using these coach bolts, it has this square bit at the end of the thread. I had to come back with a 10mm drill bit and drill in slightly deeper into the hole so they could fit in. Then using my trusty hammer I could give it a few good whacks so it was into position. First of all I fitted a washer and then the wheel in place. And then I used two nuts to secure the wheel in place. The second one being a locking nut which I could then adjust until the wheel moved freely. I marked the bolt up where it protruded too far and then came back with my angle grinder and cut the bolt off. Then after adding the slats to the shelf supports, the cart was ready for its first test drive. Then last thing to add, and most importantly, when having a barbecue, was a bottle opener. Time to spark up the barbie. Yummy. So here's the finished cart. The only things I chucked away from my old barbecue were the legs. And I must say the first barbecue I've cooked on this tasted amazing. I'll leave links in the description box below to the things I used. If you like this project, please give me a thumbs up. 
comment below. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all again next week.